and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we've got an enormous puzzle to tackle today. Although apparently this is not that difficult, even though it does look, it looks daunting. Um, it's called Deconstruction Site, and it's by James Sinclair. Now, James is on an absolute tear at the moment. He's been appearing on the channel once every five or six days um, for the last few months, simply because his puzzles are such high quality. Is this, this is 11 by 11, isn't it? Uh, yes. Okay, so this is an 11 by 11, which is, it's become something of a classic Sudoku form. There is some tricks, some some some, uh, some tricks I can tell you about, uh, about 11 by 11 Sudoku grids, but we'll get to that when I read you the rules properly and we start solving. Um, I think it's got two stars out of five and a lot of beautiful comments on Logic Masters Germany, so that gives you an idea of how difficult this one is. Um, what do I need to tell you about that? I have got news today actually that I need to share with you. Let me start with a message about our upcoming book, which is tremendously exciting. Um, so this is Cracking the Cryptic, well, Cracking the Cryptic's Greatest Hits, Volume 2. I mean, look how beautiful this is looking. So it's very nearly ready. Are there any more pictures of the yeah, there are. <laughs> uh, it's very nearly ready. The sort of final PDF um, is, is all but done. And our next job is to, um, well, order the printed book. And we want to make sure we order enough printed books. Um, so if there is any chance that you've been delaying and thought, oh, I would like to get a copy of the book, please do so really soon. That would be, um, that's going to be the way you can guarantee getting a copy. Um, I think I hope I don't get this wrong. I think the price of the book is $19 if you want the physical copy. Um, or you can buy, I think you can buy the physical copy of both books as well. So our first Cracking the, Crypt, Cracking the Cryptic's Greatest Hits, Volume 1 and Volume 2. And you get digital copies of both for about $35. It's some, there's a small discount, I think, if you buy both books. Anyway, uh, I'll put a link under the video. I'll try and remember if I can, uh, and if YouTube lets me to put one on the screen as well. So if you want a copy of the book, if you didn't book the, um, back the Kickstarter originally, uh, but you do want to get hold of a copy of the book, then now is the time. Now is the time to tell us. Um, now, what else do I need to tell you about? I'm going to start with the fact that we did release a crossword video earlier today. We called it something like Masterclass and we crossed it out and put fail. I, I won't reveal why, um, but you can watch the video and find out if you're interested in crosswords. As one of our viewers is, Sierra, thank you so much for it. We got a lovely email from Sierra saying that she's found the channel about a year ago and has since watched all of the crossword videos we've ever published. And to the point where um, Sierra basically now can solve at least half uh, of a cryptic crossword. So it does show you, if you do take this up as a hobby and if you do learn from the videos, you can really make progress. Um, so well done, Sierra. I, I really, I really did. Uh, enjoy reading your news. Um, and in fact, oh, I'm going to share something with you. I'm going to, there's a spoiler in, in, in the next sort of 30 seconds of the video. So if you do do the Times Quick Crossword, the concise crossword every day, and you haven't done today's, look away now because I'm going to put the answer on the screen. I just want to talk to you a bit about why I really recommend doing the concise crossword, which is obviously, it's, um, it's a lot easier than, than the cryptic crossword. Um, but the Times very often includes a little Ninas, as they're called. Um, I, think, I think they're called Ninas. I'll explain what the Nina is in a moment, but I think they're called Ninas after the American caricaturist Al Hirschfeld, who used to include uh, the name of his daughter Nina in all of his drawings. So, you know, hidden on a sleeve somewhere, there would be Nina just, just slotted in. Um, and if you look at this grid, you might find something really rather lovely about it. Uh, and and let, me, let me point you in the direction of the unchecked letters in the perimeter. If you read them, they spell out love makes the world go round, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, so you'll find something like that. It's not, it, it can be in the perimeter, but it can be in the diagonals. It can be words that have associations with each other. There are all sorts of things, but there is normally one in every times concise crossword. So if you are a crossword fan, do look out for them. 
uh, because they are normally there. Um, now, what else did I need to tell you? Birthdays. I must do birthdays. So let me start with Shelby over there in Australia. It's your birthday. And I know this because your fiance Denzel wrote to us. Um, now, your birthday is tomorrow for me. But I think by the time this video goes live, it will be your birthday. So I hope I've got that right. I understand there will be cake. So Shelby, happy birthday. I hope you have a great day. And then Juliana. This was really cool, actually, Juliana. I think you've turned 17 today. Um, and I know this for two reasons. I had an email from your boyfriend, Alistair, who asked you asked for a shout out. And then I had a separate email um, some weeks later uh, asking for a shout out for Juliana from uh, your brother, Antonio. And I, rec I saw that we'd had two shout out requests for Juliana. I wasn't sure whether they were the same Juliana, but I am now. I've, I've done some surname research and I am very confident that Juliana, you have had two birthday requests. So well done. And I hope today is a fabulous 17th birthday for you. Um, and that's it. Now we get to solve some Sudoku. Let's have a look at Deconstruction Site by James Sinclair. Um, and um, I will read you the rules. They are as follows. Fill the grid with nine non-overlapping three by three square regions such that each region contains the digits one to nine once each and no digit repeats in any row or column. So our first task is going to be to plot where the nine by nine regions go in the puzzle. Um, and I don't know how we're going to do that, but that's that's our first job. Um, cells outside regions do not contain digits. So having having worked out where the where the, the actual boxes go, the rest of the puzzle becomes sort of otiose and unfilled. Cages show the sum of their digits, and digits cannot repeat within a cage. Um, <laughs> now I did notice. I did notice when I looked at this grid that there is probably the largest six cage that there has ever been in Sudoku. Look at this cage here. There is the most monumental six cage going all the way down the grid, forming a sort of, I don't know, the Rio Grande or something. Um, and yeah, so that that's clearly going to have to have uh, some adjustments done to it because we can't put digits in all of those squares. Uh, digits along arrows sum to the digit in the connected circle and can repeat if allowed by other rules. So to, to get this circle sum, we add up those three digits. Maverick, Maverick, how nice to see you. Mm -mm. Um, you can probably hear Maverick flying past. Um, yeah, and that, that literally is all the rules. So do have a go. James's puzzles, as I said before, are absolutely wonderful. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play let's get cracking now oh yes i have to tell you the secrets don't i of uh, deconstruction puzzles so let me um let me highlight some cells I'll highlight those cells and let's just talk about these cells so the only trick i know about deconstruction puzzles that are 11 by 11 large is that these cells i've just highlighted these green cells have to form part of a three by three region in the puzzle um, and the way that that's proved, oh, it's sort of pigeonhole principle proof, if I remember rightly. The way you prove that is, well, yeah, you, I will invite you to place a three by three region in this puzzle right now that doesn't overlap with one of those green cells. Can you do it? And this, well, you can't. I mean, that's the short answer. Wherever you try and put a three by three box, it will definitely overlap with one of these green, uh, one of these green cells. Um, and and it, and it will only overlap with one of the green cells, because if we do make it overlap, even if we try and be as sort of efficient as possible and plonk the, the green cell right in the corner, we can't quite reach any other green cell. So what this means is that... Um, Let's, for example, uh, imagine that one of the boxes, we, de we decide that one of the boxes is going to overlap with this one. Well, even if we're as efficient as we can be about where we put that green box, so even you know, that box, so even if we, we tuck it right into the corner up there, I will now invite you to place another three by three box in this puzzle that doesn't overlap with the remaining green cells. 
and you won't be able to do it. So you can sort of iterate to the point here, which is that each of these um, has to have a uh, has to in well each three by three box for there will be nine of them has has to overlap with exactly one of these green cells um, and therefore we get a little start in the puzzle because we at least know well hmm you see okay I'm, I'm now changing tack slightly I'm wondering whether I can assume I mean like that 24 cage there this well that that must be yeah okay it's got a real digit in it because this cell is definitely uh, a live cell if you like so how do I make that cage add up to 24 it's all it's all got to be green because even if I include the maximum Sudoku digits um, well I have to include 7 8 and 9 given I can't repeat a digit in a cage so those cells are now in the puzzle maybe I should have different colors actually green is is quite lively isn't it maybe I'll go orange maybe I'll go orange and blue I'm very conscious that I should be careful about colorblind colorblindness um, you see again can I assume this 30 cage here has to contain digits that sum to 30 so in theory it has to be six seven eight and nine Cages show the sum of their digits. I mean, how can that not contain six, seven, eight, nine? So is it is it legitimate for me to just orangeify the whole thing? It probably is, but maybe I'll just hold off on that for a moment. I'm just wondering if... Ah, no, okay, I'm going to change tack again. <laughs> I'm jumping around a bit here because I've just noticed that my my river running through the grid here has got three live cells in it that's huge <laughs> because these digits all have to be different so the minimum they can sum to would be six if they were one two and three and that's the maximum they can sum to because that is that is the sum of the cage so everything else this is going to do absolutely monumental work uh well yeah because that cell's definitely in in a three by three box and we can now see it's in the top right hand corner so that is a box boom let's um let's uh, outline it hang on we can let's draw in let's draw in an outline uh that cell definitely can't be in a three by three box anymore because it's a one by one sort of cul-de-sac cell that's that's look that's the got the same uh profile as that one so this is another box here let's ring this one um <laughs> this is great that is now in the top right hand corner um it's got to be a, a cell and it's in the top right hand corner of its box so we can we can draw that one in uh we think oh no 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 we can keep going this one has that same property so that's all got to be a box we're actually doing we've got quite a lot of boxes uh, yeah we've got quite a lot of boxes look that's got to be blue now this is in the top right Oh, this yeah this is all done this bottom is 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 all finished look because we keep ending up we keep ending up with an orange cell in the top right hand corner of a box so we can just fit all these in and that's going to have done several six boxes so that's blue that's blue um okay and then we get stuck do we can we do the same at the top i i guess well given that this is definitely in a region that is now in a region because if, if there was a boundary here you couldn't this couldn't form a three by three because it would bump into this blue thingy here so we can extend this up to there and yeah okay and th these two are married in some sort of region aren't they so this one must go up to there as well because it can't fit a three, you can't put a three by three here. That's going to isolate this one. Same is true. That cell's got to be. Ah, <laughs> that's a total shank. That's got to be in a region. That's got to be in a region. Because again, you couldn't fit a three by three to the left of it. So that's in a region. Well, yes, th these are now joined together in a region, aren't they? So that must be in that region which means these two are in that so okay okay 
Okay, the same is true there. We're going to end up with two by twos, look. Well, hmm. We are going to end up with two by twos, but is this actually helping us to solve the puzzle? How do I, how do I fix the boxes in the top right? Ah, maybe I meant to assume. You see, if I can assume that 10 cage has has orange cells in it or the 16 has orange cells in it it probably has to i'm just slightly nervous about what what happens if blue overlaps the whole of this if blue overlaps the whole of it you know does it just get cancelled from the puzzle or does it still have to add up to 16 i mean the instructions suggest it still has to add up to 16 I don't know, maybe, maybe maybe we'll see if we can do it without making that assumption. How can we do... Oh, right, I can see some things. Let's come... I'm going to come down to the bottom again. This is a 35 cage, but it's only got five live cells in it. So they have to be a maximum. I know that the numbers 9, 8, 7, 6 and 5 do add up to 35. So we're going a bit ham on the pencil marks here. But this is a 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple now oh hang on look let's do let's do the six cage these digits are all different which is going to be hard to remember because they don't exactly see each other do they it's quite rare you get a six cage that's quite of this size oh well that's a seven <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay that was easy <laughs> that's in a seven cage and that's the only live digit in it so that's that that tells me that's a seven by Sudoku. I've got to put six, eight, nine in here to make it add up. Um, this is seven, eight, and nine, isn't it? And that's not seven. So there's now, okay, so that's not six anymore because in this box there's an eight, six, nine triple, the six of which is in this domino, so that can't also be six. Now, these two squares now have a maximum value of 5 and 4. So that square is at least a 6. Oh, ah, well, a 29 cage has got to be 5, 7, 8, 9. So we've all, it looks like we've almost got something here in terms of, you know, if that was an 8, 9, that would have to be the same digit. Only if this is a 6 does it not affect this this cage there's another seven here ah right that's going to do massive stuff so seven seven five eight nine that that is a six right okay well let's come back to the 15 cage now the 15 cage has not got it's not got seven eight or nine in it so it must be four five six um and we know the order of everything because there's a five in this row this is lovely this is lovely because it's not too hard so far um that's not seven it's the sim logic is very symmetrical as well so i've now got an eight nine pair in my in my 24 cage which allows me to play seven how do you do this 18 cage if you can't put seven six five four or or seven six five or four in it don't you have to have nine and eight if you don't have nine and eight you can't possibly get anywhere near it so it's got to be one eight nine ah no one eight nine with little thingies so this is a two three pair to finish off box i'll call this box seven you know what i mean um yeah in the bottom row look we've not put one two and three into these gaps yeah that one other thing i will just mention is that there are certain rows and columns in deconstruction puzzles that always have to have nine digits in them and they correspond to those cells we highlighted earlier these ones so you'll always find in this column and in these rows nine orange squares and that can be important because the, um, you know imagine these two cages go over here well actually let's let's separate them imagine they go like that you can see in this column in column 11 there's only six digits so you can't apply the normal sudoku scanning to them you can't go oh you know what's missing because there will be three digits missing from column 11 so but but if you focus on on this one 
you know, this one and this one, you'll always be able to do sort of new Sudoku, sort of normal Sudoku. Um, okay, so we've got one, two, three here, one, two, three here. The eight cage can't be one, seven, so that's two, six, or three, five. So that's interesting. That square can't be a one. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a very, very subtle point. Ah, no, that's a one. Oh, actually, maybe it's not a subtle point. It, this is actually quite interesting. Um, yes, I know. Never, ever speak to me at parties. It never goes well. The um, <laughs> This column, this column, uh, well, this this domino has a two or a three in it. And that is a two or a three. So these three cells here contain a two, three pair somehow. But that means this square is a one. It's just by force of nature. And that means that square is not a one. Right, and that one is in the six cage. So that's not a one and that's not a one. Now... Does that matter? Yeah, that's beautiful, actually. So we can now look at the, this row and look at this six cage, which can't have a two in it. So that's a one five pair, which means that's not a one, which means this is the one in the bottom row. That's not a one by Sudoku, and this is a one. Wow, okay, that's that. Now this is a one. <laughs> um, and we can do something in this row, can't we? Because we've got one, two, three. We haven't put four in. Four and six go into these squares. That looks interesting for the circle, actually. Four and six. So, if, so how can that be a five? It can't be a five because I've still got two more digits up here that I've got to add in. So if that's a five, and even if this is a one, two pair, it's going to add up to eight, which is definitely bigger than six. Um, so that square is a one. Whoops, that's a one. That's a five. Uh, okay, this, so this could add up to four if that is a one-two pair. And if it adds up to six, these have to add up to five. Oh, that can be done. Well, no, that would have to be, again, that would have to be one, four, because two, three is going to break that square. So there is definitely a one on this arrow in box five. And therefore, we can do that. Mm, okay, that might not have been that might not have been the crucial next step. Let me think. How do we do this then? And how are we going to get up to the top right? That's also intriguing me. Okay, five comes out of this square. So now, okay, so now I've got a 5, 8, 9 triple in box 8, which means these two squares are a 2, 3 pair. Um, is that doing something in some direction or the other? Those have all got to be blue, I can now see. Yeah, I can probably do things like that, can't I? That didn't exactly get me far. Oh, yeah, you see, now I'm wondering whether I am allowed. Because if I have to make that 16 cage add up to 16, I have to orange those. Otherwise, I, I mean, I, I can't do it at all. And that would be powerful because that's going to give me, well, it's not very powerful, but at least it helps. Let me just read the instructions again. Cages show the sum of their digits. I mean, it's fairly clear, isn't it? And digits cannot repeat within a cage. Yeah, I, I think probably I am make, meant to make, or I am meant to allow myself to assume that the cages have to contain digits. I mean, it, it is a very natural reading. I was just, I think I've done a puzzle before where the cages could be just off the grid, so to speak, and therefore ignored. I think that's what I've got in my head. Um, but you can see it's very powerful. If I assume these two digits add up to, or have to, they have to be included in getting to the 16 total, all of a sudden I earn myself a whole new box up here. 
And I know that what's more, I know this is a seven nine pair. That's not seven or nine. That's not nine. It might, it might not do very much, but it felt like it might do something. I mean, the 15 has, yeah, see again, also I'm finding symmetrical logic by making this assumption, which makes me feel like it's, it's, it's absolutely on the path in the sense that everything has been quite symmetrical to this point. Now this is less useful than that one because this can be six, nine or seven, eight. Although ooh, near, there's nearly something going on in this row. Oh, ah, this is gorgeous, right. And this again makes me think I'm on the right track because now look at the 28 cage. That 28 cage has seven digits in it. And if you know the triangular numbers and you go up as high as seven, you will know the triangular number for seven is 28, i.e. what is one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven is 28. So there is no way to include more orange in this cage because it will add up to too much. So these all turn blue, which is, which has corralled a sort of three by three into the top of the grid. So that's the last one, isn't it? So we've now we've now finished. Yeah, this looks fine. Look at this. This is going to be great. Now, well, now, now that's a seven nine pair. That's in a sixteen cage. So this this ten cage contains even digits. Um, ooh, now what do we do? I mean. Oh, that's lot. No, this is gorgeous. This is classic James. Classic James. This is because look, we just said that those cells are a set of the digits one through seven without repeats. That's the only way you can keep them down to twenty-eight. Well, where's the seven in those? And I don't know the. Uh, ooh, no, I, I actually don't know the answer, but I know it close enough that it's interesting because the seven can't go here because there's a seven-nine pair. It can't go here because there's a seven-nine domino which means it's here somewhere, in fact, it's, and it's not there. So there is a seven in one of these two cells, which means this 15 cage can't be seven, eight. That has to be six, nine. And that gets me an eight over on this side. That's beautiful. That eight gives me a nine. That gives me a six. So that's not six. That's not eight. Um, that's now a nine. That's an eight, therefore, via, via the majesty of cage logic. So this, uh, this eight sorts that out to be a five. So that's a nine and that's an eight. And now this square can't be seven or nine. That can't be five. That can't be eight, neither can that one. This can't be nine. <laughs> um, so, oh no, I thought that was a triple. It's not quite a triple actually. That's not seven. We might be able to make it into a triple. What's going on here? Yeah, is it? Is it? Where does nine go? Yes. Okay. That it is. Look, there's nines looking at all those squares, so that has to be nine. I have a feeling that's not going to do anything, actually. So there's definitely a six and an eight in this domino. Or this triomino, I should say. Sorry, I can't see how to do that. Um, six is now making an appearance in my eight cage. So that's got to be two six, which is going to give me a three here, and a two here, and a three here, and a two here, and a three here. That's good. Although, although that got exciting for a moment and then stopped. Um, ah, bobbins. Okay, what's the, what are these squares? They're four, five, and eight, aren't they? Four, five, ooh, four, five, and eight. These squares are two and three, exactly the same as these. Um, so these have got to be four and five. Now, can we do better than that somehow? Uh, I can't see. Uh, what about these then? These are four, six, nine. It doesn't look 
like there's anything looking down on them. I might be wrong. Oh, look, there's a seven looking all. That's quite, <laughs> it's just a long way to scan. You have to go all the way up to the top. So that's got to be nine. That's got to be seven. That's got to be nine. That's got to be six. So there's six and nine. That's become a four. Um, and maybe we have to focus on these digits then. One, two, five, and eight. Let's actually fully pencil mark that in case that reveals no. Uh, maybe it doesn't reveal anything. That's not one. That's the most minor comment. Uh, you can't put eight there because this can't be nine. Look, so that's come down a little bit. Oh, all right. That didn't work. That didn't work, did it? Okay, so what do we do now? It's going to have to be... Hmm, I don't know. All right, so is it... Do I have to pencil mark my 28k? Oh yeah, look, we, we said that this was the numbers um, one to seven and this one can't be an eight then can it that's got to be two or five so there's now definitely an eight in this domino for what that's worth which apparently is nothing all right i am going to do it i'm going to pencil mark all of these digits one mark would find this hilarious one two three four five six seven now we know that those are not seven we know that these are not one look this isn't going to do anything, I don't think. I think I've I think I've missed the trick here. This is far too open-ended. That can't be seven. We 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 already knew that. We can't six also has to come out of all of those squares. So Se oh seven. Okay, I didn't realise this. That's seven. Look by the power of Sudoku unsurprising that I missed that and oh look it's beautiful it's this six cage I was wondering how we were going to do this but the six cage now has a three in it so that becomes a two so that's not a two and that's not a two and that you ah no I see what this is doing I see what this is doing. Now, if that's a two, this arrow can't add up to four because this is at least adding up to four on its own before you cater for this digit. So that's got to be six. That's four. That's four. That's three. That's one. Oh, look at this. That's gorgeous. So this is now not one anymore. And neither is that. And the four is doing the four and the five. Uh, okay, fair play. That's just exceptionally good setting. Uh, this is all done. This is all done. It's yeah, you have to just keep an eye on this six cage and it just sort of It just sort of works now That square is not a four So this is three five and eight, but we know the eight is vertical here So we know that this so now I've got a three five pair apparently in this box That's strange. So that's got to be eight And this square is now right down to one or two which means five must be up here i'm going to label that in case that in case that helps me and if that's three or five that's not three or five so this has come down as well oh and in this row where does one go one's got to go there so that's going to finish all this off wow and that finishes this off and that finishes this off Hang on, now we have to be careful because we've used four and five and seven. So we can take four and five out of these cells of our 28 cage. <laughs> Feels strange saying that, but that seems to be what we have to do. But yeah, where does where does one go? <laughs> oh no, one's appeared, so we can't use one again. <laughs> oh, so this has become two, three, and six, which means that's a five. How silly. <laughs> five, three. Um, so this digit, actually, we can look at this digit because this is very limited now. We're adding one to that number. So this can't be a three because that's going to clash with the four. It might be able to be a three. Though. 
three. Why doesn't that work? I don't know. That can't be a three. If this is six, that has to, no. That can't be six. One plus six is seven, and that's going to break. So this is three. That's two. Uh, hang on. There's something wrong here. I've now gone def. I've definitely gone wrong. I've got two fives in this cage. I've got two threes in this box. Okay, something something went awry there. Where did that happen? So I ended up getting a two there, which I thought gave me a five here. That looks right, doesn't it? Oh, hang on. Four, five. That became a one. So four and five have gone. So this should become a three now. Is that what I did next? No, I didn't. I labeled some stuff up there. Whoa, 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 whoa. That had to be a three, Simon. Why did I make that a five? I don't know. <laughs> the mystery, the mystery is apparent, but that definitely doesn't feel right. I'm going to take out all those pencil marks and I'm going to use that five to, to see. A th so that's three, that's five. And now let's have another look because we now know what these digits are. They have got to be one, two and six. OK, that's at least, well, that's now one. It's a naked single. Let's see. So this is a two, six pair. But we're going to have to think about this all over again because this is this. Well, hopefully there will be options that work. But that now is nine. That's six. Uh, can we finish this off? Uh, this is what I was worried about here. We can't really do Sudoku on these columns because we haven't got enough digits. We can do Sudoku on this row, though, and that seven is doing some work. Hmm. OK, that three is doing some work. So we end up with a six, eight here and a six, eight here, which can't be a six. So that's eight. That's six. That's five. That's eight. Beautiful. Now, that's not five. Um, and in terms of the digits, we haven't, oh, five has to go there by Sudoku. So this is a three, four pair. And we know the order. So that is a three. So that is a two and that is a six. OK, now, does it work now or not? This is going to be the, the acid test. Now, what did we do? We took four out of here so we can take six out of here. And we took two out of here so we could take eight out of here. And oh, that four takes eight out. No, that doesn't do it. Oh, ah, OK. I'm now slightly worried there's another mistake in here. I've got a two six pair and three, four and eight. So this is, ah, the corner digit. Look, in this box, we've not placed three, four and eight. But that corner digit has to be four then. It sees three and it sees eight. So that becomes eight. That means that's two by maths. That's six. And that becomes a... Th have we just finished the puzzle? No, we haven't finished the puzzle, but we're close now. Yeah, we have finished it. Four, five. There we go. And suddenly, even though there was a ricket in the middle, it's just filled itself in. Is it right? Yay! <laughs> That's brilliant. It's classic James Sinclair. I mean, that's that's the highest compliment you can give it. It's classic James Sinclair. Just brilliant deconstruction site. So it's 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 all about. Well, it's frankly, it's all about that six cage and just spotting and then remembering that those digits have to be different. And that that allowed us to do a great deal of work. Um, uh, it is a, it's a very unusual puzzle in that deconstruction puzzles yeah, uh, you know, in my mind, I associate them greatly with Jay Dyer and not being terribly easy, um, but being wonderful, being by Jay. But this is by another Jay, a James this time, and is uh, it's it's yeah, it's not too bad if you know the trick. I think if you didn't know the trick at the start, it's probably a lot harder. Let me know in the comments how you got on with it. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>